everybody, but moving forward, I think there's a lot of focus on data centers. The definition, the very definition of a data center itself has changed. It's not just bricks and mortar anymore. And, and moving forward, there's an opportunity for us to be a lot more energy efficient uh, in the design of our data centers and in the deployment of them. Um, historically, uh, containerized solutions have been looked at from a portability perspective, and, a, and they, can, they can get a short lead time to, to, to market. Um, and, and looking at optimizing the server delivery over a thousand U in a container versus 40 U in a rack. Um, we're looking at a container as a single SKU. Uh, a lot of debate with uh, local jurisdictions around is it a container, uh, a building, or is it a piece of equipment? Um, we view it as a piece of equipment. It's basically an air handling unit with, with servers inside of it. Working with those local jurisdictions, some obstacles we have to overcome are, are UL listing, uh, F factory mutual listing, CE marking, so that it's a certified piece of equipment when we deploy it, and, and we don't have to have any issues with the local code as we, we want to power up the units. But some of the goal is, is to move the cost from our long lead equipment to our short lead so that we deploy facilities at the same time that we deploy servers, and we optimize that delivery. So in the industry, it's been seen as, as a solution for burst demand. Microsoft's approach is very different. We, we see them as a primary packaging unit. Um, they're not the only packaging unit, uh, they're just one SKU in, in, in all the SKUs that we have to choose from. And some of the costs, um, you know, if you think about it, if, you, if we ship servers in individual units or in, or in racks versus shipping them in a container, uh, we save a lot in regards to the packaging, the shipping, the transportation costs. Um, we don't need raised floors. I read an article two weeks ago about a greener data center because it had a 30 inch raised floor and therefore optimized the airflow. And um, wouldn't it be greener if we eliminated the raised floor entirely and didn't use any energy to produce that raised floor and ship and package it? Um, and that's, that's really the case with containers. There's a lot of components that we can completely eliminate. And at Microsoft, we're actually questioning every component in the data center, up to and including the roof and the building itself. Um, concrete is a big issue. Concrete is 5% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, globally, we're looking at the opportunity to completely eliminate concrete from our data center bills uh, moving forward. So you can ask me questions at any time. Um, so the container gives us the opportunity to test new technology as well. If, if, if you think about as you build a data center today, um, if it's a 10 megawatt, 50 megawatt, 100 megawatt data center, it's built out, it's sitting there, and it's, in, it's capital that's not being utilized as you fill the data center out. It's materials that are not being utilized. And, we're really stuck on that technology for the depreciation cycle of the building, which is 10 to 15 years. And with a container, what we can do is, as we bring in a container, we can refresh that technology over time. We can change the technology. We're not stuck within a colo or a raised floor area on a single technology. And that's in regards to the reliability of the systems and the density of the systems that are deployed in the data center. And so there's a lot of opportunity for us to refresh it. And there's a big debate about how we refresh, what's the useful place um, so, as I mentioned, 15 to 20 years is mechanical and electrical infrastructure. Uh, I think the mic's going in and out. 15 to 20 years is mechanical and electrical infrastructure. Servers are five years. So, is it is as we deploy containers, uh, the useful life of them maybe 10, 15 years. But if we refresh the servers in another five years, do we take the container back out, refurbish it, and then redeploy it with the same technology, or do we look at the opportunity to refresh that technology with the server refresh? Um, and then, is there any residual value in the, in the container itself? So the financial models are still being worked, uh, and, and, and I think there's opportunity there as well. Um, so we have standalone units running in production today. Um, we, we, we've units that are supporting online properties. Uh, we've run POCs with several different vendors. Uh, it's my belief that every major vendor will have a product available in the marketplace um, at this scale in the next 12 to 24 months. We're working with many different OEMs and technologies. Um, I, I think that there's patents out there as well around containerized solutions. Um, taking a industry standard and putting it in an industry standard, I don't think it's patentable, but um, what happens inside that uh, unit itself, the airflow, how it's laid out, I think is definitely patentable. Um, and I think there's going to be a lot of innovation in this area moving forward uh, to, to capture the opportunity that's here. And from an energy efficiency perspective, the proof of concept we ran, uh, we saw PUE numbers come in at, at a peak of 1.3, and if you compare that to historical data centers, that's very, very low. Um, 
most data centers around the world would be 1.6 to 2.0. And the PUE is the power usage effectiveness, it's the overhead of power. So for every watt into a server, if it takes a watt to cool it, that's a PUE of two. For PUE of 1.3, it means it's a 30% overhead on the power to run those servers. So that's the losses in the electrical system and, and the energy to run the fans and the pumps and the water systems. And in regards to water, today the units that we're working on are, are water-based cooling designs. I think water is going to become a, a big resource on the planet that we're going to have constraints around and we're going to be questioned and, and, and really start to look at the use of water in our data centers and try to eliminate it and go to chillerless data centers. Any questions? So some of the, the pros and cons and in regards to an economy of scale, we're pulling two to three thousand units at a time and you know, has a lot of advantages to it. Um, there is a risk with, with larger units of compute and that we could spend more power. A lot of data centers today, um, we're managing the power budget of a peak power number on each server versus an average utilization. Um, and, and then being able to do power capping, there's different white papers out there on power capping. There's new technologies that are coming into the marketplace this year. Um, if we can do power capping and manage our power budget uh, within the data center, we could get 30 to 50% more servers in there because we're, we're managing the power across an average versus the peak and you set thresholds at different levels. The threshold could be at the server, the rack, the container, the data center itself, whichever is the first threshold that's met, that's the one that's limiting the power that's consumed on the unit. And moving forward as well in regards to the form factor itself, and today we're trying to, to build technology to fit into a container as a, as a standard shipping unit. And moving forward, I think, we need to reverse that logic and start to look at the designing systems um, instead of shoehorning in existing technology, designing systems specifically for this form factor. And, and I also believe that if we look at containers, that that, that form factor itself will change over time as well. Uh, for, for flexibility, um, self-contained small remote deployment can go anywhere with power and network if we eliminate the water. There's a huge advantage to it. We, we'll start to, to marry technologies such as you know, solar power generation, fuel cells, uh, hydro, um, wind, and, and put that in, in conjunction with a container. And if you think about one PC in every home on the planet, what about one DC in every town on the planet? And that DC is a container unit that's self-sufficient from a power perspective, and all you do is connect network to it. Um, with wireless technologies, we may even go to have a completely off-the-grid data center that we can deploy to towns all across the globe. Um, one of the, the challenges today is that working with particular vendors as we buy these units, they're homogenous solutions to a single vendor, so we don't have solutions in the marketplace yet that we can purchase and then support multiple different vendors in them. I think that flexibility is a trade-off with optimization as well. Um, expandability, we, essentially we're, we're unlimited in the expansion up to the power capability with these units and uh, the cost for expansion is stretched over time compared to a fixed facility. So from an energy efficiency perspective, uh, there's a lot of other technologies we're looking at with containers, which is uh, DC distribution systems. We're even looking at 13.2 kV distribution in the data center, all the way to the container itself, and then there's a transformer in the container. That's actually being required for the isolation of harmonics, so we don't go over the THD limits on the containers as well, um, and to manage that within the unit. Um, but when, when we go out with an RFP for for a container, we're, we're specifying all the connection points, including the voltage levels. But we're distributing a 13.2 kV in the data center. It's a lot more energy efficient than a, a two, 208 supply or a 110 supply. Any questions? <coughs>